In honor of the holiday spirit and in an effort to brighten up these dark last few days of December, today's video is all about redemption as we count down the top 10 most powerful villains who became superheroes. Coming in at number 10, we have James Proudstar, aka the hero Warpath. A mutant that developed superhuman strength, Warpath idolized the X-Men as a young man when his older brother, Thunderbird, joined the team. However, Thunderbird tragically died on his very first mission, an incident that caused Warpath to begin to hate the X-Men and become obsessed with killing Professor Charles Xavier. Briefly joining with the villain group called the Hellions, Warpath would eventually see the error of his ways and return to the side of good, frequently fighting alongside the new mutants to help save both humanity and all of mutant kind. Coming in at number 9, we have Natasha Romanov, aka the Black Widow. That's right, while she might be best known now for being an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. and being one of the most resourceful members on the Avengers team, the Black Widow still has an awful lot of red in her ledger. In her very first appearance, Black Widow was attempting to rob Iron Man's tech with the help of another villainous thief at the time, Hawkeye. While Hawkeye would see the error of his ways a bit quicker than Natasha, she would go on to be brainwashed by the infamous Red Room, training her to be a remorseless assassin, skills that she now uses today as a member of the Avengers to try and make up for her bloody past. Coming in at number 8, we have Bucky Barnes, aka the Winter Soldier. Originally believed to have perished during Captain America's World War II era adventures, Bucky was in fact captured and brainwashed by the villainous organization Hydra, turning him into the perfect weapon and such a deadly assassin that he would become infamous throughout the Marvel Universe, even rumored to be involved in the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. It was only through the dedication of his best best friend Steve Rogers, aka Captain America, that Bucky was finally able to remember who he is and abandon his villainous career. While he's since started using his lethal training for the side of good, the Winter Soldier is still a brutal opponent, and with an arm made out of pure vibranium, surviving one of his punches is something that his enemies should definitely still be worried about. Coming in at number 7, we have the infamous Harley Quinn. Originally a psychiatrist at Arkham Asylum who took a particular fascination in the Joker, Harleen Quinzel was manipulated over time into breaking the Joker free and killing a guard before the Joker pushed her into a similar vat of chemicals to the one that had created him in the first place. Reborn as the Joker's second in command, Harley believed she was in love for years as she helped the Joker with his schemes and war against Batman, but would eventually come to realize that the Joker Joker was a violent man with no genuine feelings for her. Ever since, Harley has struggled to keep doing the right thing and has become more of an anti-hero than an outright villain, fighting back against the clown prince of crime that took so, so much away from her. Coming in at number 6, we have Selina Kyle, aka the one and only Catwoman. Originally just a cat burglar in a slightly more elaborate costume, Catwoman terrorized Gotham City for a while as her heist grew more and more elaborate elaborate and continued to be foiled by that pesky Batman. Eventually, however, Selina would wind up prioritizing those she cares about more than her thieving ways or connections to other supervillains, and combined with her growing romance with Batman after years of merely being flirty rivals, it finally looks like Catwoman might be permanently fighting for the good guys from now on. Just you know, don't blame her if anything too expensive goes missing. Coming in at number 5, we have Patrick O'Brien, aka Plastic Man. Typically seen as one of the comic relief members of the Justice League, Plastic Man's origins actually began with him being a common criminal, a safecracker for a band of burglars. Following a robbery gone wrong, Patrick was shot, covered in chemicals, and left for dead, unintentionally causing his transformation into Plastic Man. Capable of completely manipulating his body down to the molecular level, Plastic Man is essentially indestructible given how flexible he's able to become. Completely impervious to physical damage, Plastic Man has also shown a complete immunity to mind control or telepathic suggestions, as his brain isn't made of enough solid matter to control. All of these facts combined make Plastic Man a very redeemed superhero. Coming in at number 4, we're gonna have to go with the famous or should 
should I say, infamous Deadpool. Originally designed to be a dark but slightly sarcastic villain for the X-Force comic series, Deadpool has over the years turned into a charming and fourth wall breaking anti-hero that's always trying to do some form of good but sometimes shows it in some pretty odd and violent ways. However, the most notable aspect of Deadpool's powers and what makes him so powerful is his sheer inability to die. No matter how many times you stab him, shoot him, or chop some bits off, Deadpool will always bounce back with at least a couple of bad jokes. Add in his not insignificant skill with all manner of firearms and weaponry, and you've got an explosive anti-hero you do not want to mess with. Coming in at number 3, we have Pietro Maximoff, aka Quicksilver. A super speedster with a complicated backstory that's gone back and forth on both his parentage and whether his powers are mutant in origin, Quicksilver was one of the original members of Magneto's Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, before eventually being convinced of Magneto's villainy I wonder if the phrase evil mutants had anything to do with that, and joined the Avengers instead, at the very same time as early member Hawkeye. With nearly all of his abilities focused on making his body and movement as aerodynamic as possible, Quicksilver's speed has been theorized to be limitless, even if his powers don't quite compare to all of the extra abilities of the DC Universe's speed force. Nevertheless, Quicksilver is incredibly fast for the Marvel Universe, and let's keep hoping that he continues continues to run for the good guys. Coming in at number 2, we have Wanda Maximoff, aka the Scarlet Witch. Originally believing herself to be the mutant daughter of Magneto, Wanda is in reality one of the most powerful magic wielders in the Marvel multiverse, and a conduit for chaos magic that allows her to rewrite reality to her will. And while she was one of the first members of Magneto's Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, given the whole thought he was her dad thing, she'd eventually become an essential member of the Avengers, even if she does occasionally have brief forays into more anti-hero-like activities, such as the whole M-Day scenario. But hey, nobody's perfect. And finally, coming in at our top spot, we've got Eddie Brock, aka the iconic Venom. From Spider-Man's edgier looking costume, to a bulky, web-slinging supervillain, to the lethal protector of San Francisco, Venom has held more jobs over the years than anyone else. But with the recent defeat of the dark symbiote god known as Null, Venom has become the leader of the symbiotes entirely, and thus has one of the most unstoppable armies in the entire Marvel Universe at his beck and call, alongside the fourth dimension spanning ability to interact with any symbiote throughout both space and time. Let's hope that Venom keeps on leaning on the hero part of Antihero, because otherwise, all of these additional power boosts that he's gone through recently could wind up being a huge problem for the rest of the Marvel Universe. That's all the time we have for today's countdown, so thank you all so, so much for watching. As always, I've been Josh Busker, and I'll see you all next time, Nerd Squad. Happy Holidays!